Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. It's Chris Cottrell, and I felt like part two of the um, of the law of superposition on the floodplains of the East Coast uh, well, was just a little bit rushed. Uh, there was a lot more that I could have talked about, and so I decided to put out a part three. So here we are. Let's go ahead and get into part three. Uh, I'm going to start again right here at Bamberg. And the first thing I want to do is uh, I kind of just want to pan out and take a look at the whole area. I didn't really do that last time. Uh, and, you know, I, I mentioned that, you know, due to the law of superposition, we've gone through how, you know, how long ago the bay should have formed. And then we have the sand rims forming inside of them. Then we have bays forming inside of the sand rims. And so that really, geologically speaking, doesn't give us a lot of time to account for the amount of water that that just created these massive floodplains that literally only contain like trickles of water in them now. Um, you know, even if I, if I go down, uh, go down south a little bit, you know, we can see the size of these floodplains. You know, here's one coming out of Augusta. Uh, this is the Savannah River. And, and as it flows through, you know, you can see here, it just gets tremendously huge. And um, there's really, I've, I've shown this area a lot. This is kind of one of the first areas where you can really start seeing all these Carolina bays pop up. Um, and again, if I just, you, I'm going to do this uh, a few times today, but if I just use my measuring tool and, and go across, you know, this is a four to five mile floodplain. So, so we're talking, you know, sometime within the past 20,000 years, something happened to create these, these five to 15 mile wide floodplains. And I want to show you one of these 15 mile wide floodplains, uh, uh, here in a little bit, but, um, something else I didn't do that I, I really should have done last time was spend a little bit more time showing you the difference. And so let me go ahead and click off of the LIDAR and show you what we're talking about here. You know, this is the, this is the Savannah river and it's large, you know, it is a big river, especially if you're on it fishing and things like that. Uh, but compared to the size of his floodplain, uh, it's a trickle, you know, and, and remember we, we were talking about the, the whole scale and variance thing where, you know, it really doesn't matter the volume of the water. Water is going to behave the same. And so if we look at the these floodplains and just the, you know, we do see a curve in this floodplain. So, that, that I mean, this this was a tremendous amount of water. It started to do what it's supposed to do uh, and then stopped, you know, and then there, was, there wasn't as much water coming out of it anymore. But if you look all up and down the East Coast, you know, we have these very long and straight floodplains. Uh, which, you know, really is an indication that they were draining a tremendous, uh, a tremendous amount of water, but it was for a very short time. Uh, and then you factor in all of these Carolina bays and uh, the sand rims that, I show, that I've been showing you. Uh, you know, we can really start to piece together a timeline. We can really start to, to, to understand and, and figure out the story that's, that needs to be told here. Um, so anyways, yeah, like I said, you know, even some of these really large floodplains, you know, or long floodplains, they, they just are so straight and so long and, and the banks are so straight, just a sharp cut right through. Uh, we don't see any of those meandering bends that you should see like this right here. Um, this is what you should see all up and down these rivers. If it was, you know, a long-term process of, of meandering that formed these floodplains. Um, so anyways, again, I wanted to spend a little bit more time focusing on the, um, just the sheer size and the volume of water that must have been coming through these areas. Uh, the, the farther south we get here, the, the, the fewer bays we find. But again, they were, this whole area still would have been affected by the flood water. Um, and so I, I still want to take, you know, a couple measurements of, uh, you know, if I can. I don't know why this gives me such a hard time. But yeah, there's a three mile wide floodplain right there. Um, and, you know, they, some of these just get huge. They, we got these really, really large floodplains. Um, let's check this one real quick. Yeah, that's an over five mile. I mean, that one time that this whole thing was just full of water, over five miles of water uh, across. And just a tree. I mean, you could see, again, we, I, I mentioned before about the the braiding uh, as the water started to recede, the the you know, the main channel would spill over and we'd get these new, new uh, redirected branches of water in, in all kinds of directions. And, and that's exactly what you see here um, all the way down. Uh, so a tremendous, and you know, again, uh, you know, especially down here in the South, we still have these bays that are popping up from time to time. And so, um, you know, but once you start getting into North Carolina or South Carolina, North Carolina, again, it's just, there are so many bays everywhere. 
um, and still these tremendous floodplains everywhere. Uh, let's see here. Here's a good area. Uh, and again, you can see these massive um, bends here. Uh, and then really nothing else after that. And then there's still some bays in there too. So again, I think this was very, very quick, uh, very rapid. We've got these Saturns that formed and have been relatively untouched since they were formed. Um, you know, so we had water spilling over, coming over, um, cutting through right here. Uh, and then we had a tapering off and we had all this, this braiding. And then, you know, the river has since then been, you know, finding its way and making its meanders like it's supposed to. Um, but I don't think we have seen anywhere near the amount of water that flew th flowed through here at one time uh, after these bays were formed. <laughs> so again, uh, using the law of superposition, we should be able to start to to put these things together. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, all of these bays here, again, the splash chevrons, we've got the water coming out. Uh, you know, I... I I hope we are you now this is a neat area because we had some we had some bays that were formed uh, and looks like they almost got washed out but you could still see them so that's cool that's that's neat this is a neat area to investigate uh here's lake wakama by the way i think i mentioned uh, lake wakama before um this is a a very well-known carolina bay uh you know there's there's the wakama indians uh that i mentioned in one of my other earlier videos um, and, and, you know, they, the, the legend of this area was that this, after this bay was formed, it was, you know, a, a very iridescent, a very weird greenish blue color, you know, just like we would find in glacial meltwater. And that's, that's in their legends. Um, so, so pretty neat. It's not that color now, obviously, um, you know, filled with rainwater and as most of the bays are now, uh, but this is a very large, um, you know, lake now, um, but again, and, and again, you know, you really can't see a lot of this stuff until you flip over. To that lidar and then it just pops right out <sighs> so a tremendous amount of water flowing through here all the way up and down the coast uh, and again there's only one explanation in my mind for this and that's the uh you know a saginaw bay impact sending the ice chunks down creating those bays all of that ice resting on top of the surface here because it wasn't just where the bays are formed keep in mind you know all the way up through the uh, the Piedmont into the mountains even um, there is evidence of rock slides and things that have happened in the mountains that you know are questionable you know how do they form and then this helps explain that as well so um, all that water melted all of these these river channels uh, you know started flowing together and then this by the way is called the fall line you can see here where the Piedmont pretty much ends and meets the coastal plain this is an ancient beach you know it's an ancient coastline uh, but as soon as this water hits this fall line, you know, it just collects and just, I mean, it's, it's the suddenness is, is pretty astounding uh, where all this water collects and then just meets and creates these huge floodplains, uh, tremendous amounts of water coming through there. And again, if you just use that law of superposition and look for the Carolina Bays um, and then where they're not, you know, that pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much shows us where, where this water was going. Um, so yeah, lots, lots going on here. Now down here in the lower coastal plain is interesting too. I don't have uh, much time to talk about that today. Um, but if I go down to the lower coastal plain, you know, basically the, all this water came down, hit the lower coastal plain, plain and just, just spread out, uh, towards the coast. And, and at the time the coast still would have been about another hundred miles off from where it is today. So, uh, there's a lot more to the story that we probably will never learn about because it's completely covered in the ocean now. Um, so, you know, these, these floodplains down here, um, they, they can really be large. And so, um, uh, unfortunately I, I don't really have great LIDAR for this area. Um, but there, there's probably a lot to be seen here. And, and I, I'm really hoping that one of these days that, you know, Google earth will, I mean, they should have LIDAR satellites out there just, just beaming down and giving us some, some good quality data that we can use. And, uh, hopefully one day we'll get there. Um. But anyways, guys, uh, again, I wanted to take a little bit more time showing this off, uh, you know, using that law of superposition and and coming up with a timeline and realizing that this is a fairly recent geologic event. So thanks, guys. And we'll talk to you later.